everybody, Frank and Carrie. Hey, welcome back. Your DIY abandoned mansion couple doing stuff to an old abandoned mansion. And we're fixing her up and she's looking much better. Coming to you from the attic of the Moreland house today because we had so many comments mm -hmm. about how the stairs work. <laughs> and since we don't know, we are gonna do a deep dive into it and go through and see if anybody else can. There's a lot of people that knew a lot more than we do. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try it again. This is a deep dive into the stairwell. The back stairwell. Which, oh, some people are like, well, maybe it was addition and all this. No, it is the only way to get to the attic. Correct. As you can see here, the, uh, there is no other way to get to the attic. So we'll go through that and talk about that. And we'll see if we can make it make sense. Yeah. Alrighty, this here is the top of the attic, like we talked about before. Well, not the top of the attic, the uh, top of the stairs, the attic floor. We are going to try to determine what holds this up. We want to support that better because it isn't supported very well because it sagged an inch. We know this because we use the laser level yes. stacked on the other side of the brick wall so it didn't move while we were jacking. And we're going to determine things. Now, some people are asking if we could just sister and reuse some of these joysticks. And if you look, there's not much left of the ends of these joysticks. I mean, they're just kind of, they're just rotten and ready to fall down. So let's get going. First thing we have to determine is what supports that corner. Let's go down to the next floor and see if there's something supporting it from the second floor. Da da na na. Oh, and as we're going down, these pockets we figured out were here when they were constructing the place so they could keep going up the wall, so they could build temporary platforms as they went up. That is not an old uh, pocket for a prior stairwell or anything. It's, mm -mm. it's just uh, temporary. Huh, so they did it too. All right, so we're still going down and around, trying to figure out what's holding that up. And viola. That's where we just were. We do have a wall that holds up this. So this wall is supporting that corner that we want supported. That we can't, uh, we're trying to figure out. That's what we're trying to figure out, how to support that corner. Now, that wall, where is it supported? That's a good question. Now we go round and round. <laughs> Sorry about the little bit of a cough. It's not dust. It's no. just a prior infection of something. We don't know exactly what it was. <laughs> oh, here we are. These, this is the wall we're talking about. This is the end of the wall, so that is supported down here. So this is the wall we are just looking at from the other side. It supports that corner up in the attic. 
Now what supports the wall? Well, it's built on floor joists behind here. So we need to figure out what supports the floor joists. Nothing. Well, that's the, that's right now it might be these two. But anyway, let's get in ahead of ourselves. So we look under cheer. And this is the wall that needs supported. It's supported on these floor joists. And if you'll look, it's not a continuous floor joist. So it's kind of strange that a non continuous floor joist would be supporting a wall that supports other stuff on up. So that might be a little bit of a problem. And another validation that these are, this was original, these are all square nails. All of this framing, everything was built with square nails, so we know it was done in the 1900s or before. Since the house was built in 1891, I doubt they rebuilt the back staircase and then in the first couple years. So, how did they expect these short floor joists that aren't holding anything to hold up that wall which holds up the rest? Now, from there on down there is nothing supporting that wall. As we can see, nothing. So now we got to figure out how they expected that to hold up the wall and the rest of the floor joists on the way up the stairs. So we're going to we're going to try to figure out how they expected this beam here to support, well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they just expected it was supporting that one wall right there and maybe the stringers of the stairs were supposed to help it as well. So that is the corner we're trying to support. And if you look down, there's nothing. A fake upside down no post that doesn't it's just hollow, of course. It's just a layered up, turned new post. And then this wall that doesn't, that's just loose because it's not supporting anything, of course. And the floor has sagged a little bit, and we have this landing jacked up a little bit. So it's that wall is doing nothing. It's just hanging. It's just hanging around the house. Now, maybe, like some have said, if all of these little sagging things hadn't happened, we might still be in business. These small floor joist segments might not have sagged enough to make a difference if the rest of the stuff would have held up on its own. Which, that's a good point. And that might be the truth. But, we had a water leak here, obviously. And these beams aren't doing anything anymore. They're rotted out. So, the brick arch here has failed and once the brick arch failed that joist here was allowed to sag about an inch on this side and if anybody remembers over on this side it's just sagged because there's nothing left because the termites ate it and that triple 
floor joist across here is now maybe one? I don't know. So that's why that has sagged and it has caused the second floor in this area to be sagged because these are now cantilevered joists. These cantilever joists are holding up this beam now. That's not the way it was originally designed. This beam was supposed to hold up these joists. So that sagged. One person made a good point about the fact that if we wait a little while, maybe this will stabilize and uh, jack up a little more, you know? Because these, obviously, these cantilevered floor joists that weren't supposed to be cantilevered are trying to go back to their original flatness, non bowedness, but they aren't. So, it really comes down to the fact that we, after we fix everything, we still might need to put a beam, or, I'm sorry, we still might need to put a post from this area right here, which we're going to put triple floor joists across and make a nice beam right here, up to there, and then we will be able to, we'll have to take down that newel post thingy here and just put a post in we our suspicion of why it is the way it is is we think that there was a change order to the original design and somebody wanted this basement door in this exact spot <clears throat> Maybe the basement door was supposed to be here, and this was supposed to be a wall <clears throat> with a header on top, and the basement door was, you know, right here. That would have not given us the same problems because we'd have a header up here that would have supported that wall that we've been trying to support since the third floor. So. And another thing you'll notice is there aren't they the stairs are not attached to the brick walls. Mm -hmm. The outside is just a stringer. I'm sorry, it's not a stringer, it's, it's a, a skirt. skirt board. Skirt board on the outside. The only they have three stringers on each staircase but not attached to the wall, which was interesting for us because we thought that's how they always did it. It might have been so that this brick and the lumber settled at different times. Also, the landings, <clears throat> all the landings were attached to the brick wall. They were either pocketed or a 1 by 12 was on the ends of the joists and they nailed it into the bricks. So that's how the landings were attached. But they're almost like free floating up all the way. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily have to go all the way to the basement even though, even though that's where we're going to start. Those floor joists are rotten, rotten down yeah. in the basement. Yeah. So, which is, which would be this floor. I guess we go down there and look. Yeah. Let's go down there, baby. All right, let's go. Well, like Carrie mentioned a couple of times, all of these floor joists are leaving. They're all rotten. So we have to take care of all these. This area 
is the triple where we're going to put the triple floor joists and pocket them back into the brick of course this one uh, has seen better days these brick pockets were allowed to get wet and termited and here's another case of there is no attachment to the stone or the brick but there's two stringers well one and a half this stringer doesn't look very good at all but this is where we'll probably start just so we can build a nice floor here mm -hmm. we'll have to support this side so we can hold up that built-in that's above us in the second floor on the on the first floor mm -hmm. Carol put a nice picture of it right there yeah and then we'll start supporting it on the way up and find out if we can get it to work like they had it except better so if you uh, are more confused now about what's going on or less confused it's a good thing right yeah one of them <laughs> <laughs> so let us know if you figured it out we will try to put drawings up I don't know if I'll get it done but I'll try to put some drawings up of what the actual floor the framing looks like and uh, but that that gives you a better idea of what we discovered last week it should give you a better idea of what we're dealing with so yeah and wanted to let everybody know that it hasn't been rebuilt a couple times or anything it's it's the original right so thanks for coming with us thanks for watching Did you win? Did you win? Are you queen of the tree?